Hello and welcome to another episode of Life Stuff 101. This is day 24 of the series of mini episodes as part of the Challenging Times Self-Care Challenge. My name is Mio Yokoi. I work as a registered psychotherapist in Toronto, Canada, and also as a coach and supporter to striving, highly sensitive folks everywhere. Now, before we begin, I'd like to make sure to mention that what I share on this podcast is for general information purposes only and not meant to be specific advice. And for personalized help, questions or concerns you may have, please consult your doctor, appropriate medical or mental health care provider. And so welcome after maybe quite a bit of a, a break to day 24 of the Challenging Times Self-Care Challenge. This uh, challenge, this series of these mini episodes have not necessarily rolled out the way that I had originally intended, but I still feel that there's a lot of really great tips and prompts as part of these challenges. And I hope that um, if this is your first one listening to it, to them that you might go back and uh, go through either the whole thing or some of them as you pick and choose. Uh, There's also a worksheet or a cheat sheet, however you want to put it, that you can download for my website, lifestuff101.com, so that maybe even if you don't want to listen to the episodes, there are some prompts there on a PDF format that you can use because, listen, there's a lot that's going on right now in the world. Um, The world, life in general, has a tendency to have its ups and downs and things that uh, surprise us and can have us off quarter and quarter game. But uh, especially this is 2020, mid 2020, July, mid July 2020, that these last few months have had a a completely different set of things for many of us to deal with, um, especially in this particular generation of folks, I think, especially uh, certainly in mine. So self-care is an important thing. And uh, the commitment that I made is to do 28 of these self-care episodes. And that is what I'm working toward doing. And this is, as I had mentioned, day 24. And there will be, I guess, this plus four other episodes that will be specific to self-care. But eventually, we will be getting back to talking to folks about mental health and about different topics and concerns and ideas and tools and tricks and tips and all those kinds of things when it comes to taking care of ourselves. Because the one thing that I often say is that, um, you know, our mental health is part of our overall health. And if we don't take care of our mental health or think about our mental health in the same ways that we do our physical health, we don't really have our full health. And so this is my mission with this podcast. And thank you very much for listening in. So a little while ago, I was scrolling through the new videos from the creators I subscribe to on YouTube. And I saw one called, We Need to Talk About Creator Burnout by Roberto Blake. And his work is focused on creative entrepreneurship. Um, So coaching, I believe that he does, and also giving a lot of really fantastic information that's there for anyone to look up and to learn from on YouTube. His name is Roberto Blake. And just to take a step aside for a moment, I'm fascinated by the idea and also my belief that we as human beings are capable of so much. And while entrepreneurship has become more mainstream since the advent of the internet, I get so excited by the idea of the fact that so many of us, each one of us has a potential to be able to bring our talents or gifts or whatever it is that um, we're good at or interested in or passionate about to the world in so many ways. And I really enjoy content creators specifically who teach, but also share their experiences of what it's like to be working toward autonomy, independence, and and then to be building toward their own individual potential. 
Now, not everybody is interested in entrepreneurship or um, creating something to be put out in the world, and that's fine. Um, it's there. Are, there are folks who have um, certain careers and have worked in certain businesses or certain companies or organizations or institutions for the bulk of their working careers or their lives, and that's something that they thrive in and that that they're happy with, and that it or, or they're just contented in. I think that's really fantastic. But I also believe, I think for myself personally, someone who grew up without the internet, that the potential of what is possible for anyone, someone like me, to reach people that I would never have otherwise be able to connect or to meet, um, I think is really, really fascinating. At any rate, this is the reason why I've been following Roberto Blake on YouTube actually for a good number of years now. And while most of his content is focused around information regarding what he calls creative entrepreneurship, it really caught my attention to see his video, like I mentioned I, uh, it's a little while ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago, to see his video addressing burnout. And even though the video itself is addressed to his audience, um, and his audience would be people who are interested in entrepreneurship and I guess content creators, I think a lot of what he says in the video is applicable to all of us right now. So in this episode today, inspired by Roberto Blake and his honesty, and I feel his genuine care for his audience, I am today talking about burnout. I think burnout is usually talked about in relation to work or school burnout, but given everything that's been going on during this time of the pandemic in 2020, it's my belief that a good number of us, many of us, I believe, are susceptible to burnout from everything going on in our lives right now and how to manage and figuring out how to manage so many changes all at once. To be on the lookout for it, know that it can happen to every single one of us. What can help to identify it and ways to either not get burnt out or how to take care if you might already be there in one way, shape or form. Now, it goes without saying that we're all experiencing an unprecedented time of sudden and extreme change. It can seem like an all-consuming thing just to be adjusting to all these changes, but we're all having to deal with the rest of our lives too. Each of us have the ability to do so much, so, so much, yet we don't have infinite energy and we're also not really designed as human beings to multitask. So while we're dealing with uncertainty, trying to make sense of a new normal of sorts seems it's going on right now, doing the things we need to do in our lives, it really is a lot to deal with. And on top of all of that, and this is certainly true for me too, at the beginning of things quarantining here in North America, I mistakenly thought that I had more time because I was spending more time at home. And because of this, it's my belief that many of us were thinking that we could be doing more or new things. And I would say in my experience, after taking a number of weeks of adjusting in March, I thought I'd be able to dedicate myself to a daily podcast episode. So I was, you know, as I was talking about at the beginning, at the top of this episode, you know, I'd said I'll do, um, that I started the self-care challenge episodes. And if you go back and listen to the first few, my intent was to actually do them daily. Now, I believe that there are plenty of people out there who would have been able to create something daily. But what I underestimated is my ability to be able to do it and what larger impact it would have on my well-being in general. Now, as a result, I pushed myself through the first bunch of episodes and then found that if I continued to keep doing it, I was heading toward burnout. So I decided to take the difficult decision to take a step back from pressuring myself. Now, just like you're hearing now, and as I talked about earlier, 
I will keep producing and uploading episodes, but I do have to admit that I was overly ambitious um, when I first started out with these mini episodes and certainly about doing them daily, but they will get uploaded and you'll hopefully be there to listen to them when they are up and there for you to hear. But let me just pause for a moment to thank you for your patience with me and for continuing to listen because there is absolutely more to come. But besides that, let's talk about burnout. First of all, what is it? It's when there's so much stress that's being experienced on a consistent basis that your system is overrun by stress, causing a system overload of sorts. Actually, what would be maybe a pretty good analogy is even though we're not machines, but even computers can experience overload when there are too many windows open in a browser, too many apps running. And on top of that, you're trying to watch a video all at the same time. Your computer will slow down or maybe even stop or need a reboot. It's like our biological RAM memory is taxed out when it comes to burnout, like human burnout. And as a result, we can experience a number of things. We will start slowing down, experience extreme exhaustion, be more emotionally reactive. And if either we push through the burnout or don't take, don't take the steps to take care of ourselves, it can also result in mental health challenges like anxiety and depression. And even long term, there could also be physical health issues, including chronic headaches, heart disease, hormonal issues like cortisol or thyroid difficulties, and elevated blood pressure. So let me also run down some other ways being burnt out can show itself to us. So I'll mention it again because these are actually very good indicators. Fatigue and exhaustion. So the kind of fatigue and exhaustion that you're not used to and seems very pervasive, like it's just like you're feeling that fatigue and exhaustion all the time. You're getting rest, you're chilling out, you're not doing a whole lot, but you're still exhausted and tired. That is a very good indication that you may be burnt out. You may also be emotionally distant or feeling numb. You might find yourself being more pessimistic and negative than usual. You might also find yourself wanting to opt out of the social situations like Zoom calls or if people are still Zoom, doing those Zoom calls and um, people just even chatting or, 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 or saying like, you know, let's get together for a, a physical distancing gathering in a backyard or whatever. But you're noticing that you're opting out of them because you're just feeling so tapped out. And in terms of um, bodily ways that you might be experiencing burnout, Stomach and digestive issues, um, indigestion, heartburn, even though you might not necessarily have eaten anything that would have maybe caused those problems. Body aches, if you're finding that your muscles and your body aches um, and you're experiencing pain, again, even though you may not have exerted yourself physically to warrant those kinds of pains. And also reduce, reduced energy and the ability to manage life stuff. So whether it be at work, school, home, or all of the above, all of the above, you're noticing that everything is just kind of coming to a grinding halt or you just don't have the energy to be able to manage all the things that you manage generally without a whole lot of issues, but you're now finding that they're really difficult to get through. So those are some of the ways in which burnout can show itself. So if you're nodding along or feel like these might be some things you've been experiencing recently, here are some things and tips to consider to take care of yourself. So number one, if you've been feeling excessively tired or feel as though you've been depressed, do reach out to a trusted person in your life. So someone that you feel is safe, who you know has your back um, emotionally and who, ha who you feel 
generally good talking to, you know, and afterwards when you have a chat with somebody, uh, with that particular person, and maybe you sometimes might share certain things with them and you walk away feeling good. Now that is a good indication of someone who you could maybe consider to be a trusted person because not everyone in your life, they could be all great people in your life, but not everybody in your life is maybe the best person to speak to about certain things like, Um, If you're burnt out or certain emotional or more personal things, but it's good to know who those people are. And if you are feeling burnt out to maybe approach that person. Now, your family doctor or a mental health care professional are also folks that are good to reach out to because they are trained and they'll have their ways professionally of being able to to talk to you about what's going on for you and to provide you with support. And getting personalized support can be what you may be really needing right now. Number two, know that it's okay to slow down. And if certain things like eating regularly, getting daily movement in, getting regular rest, personal hygiene and drinking adequate amounts of water are things you haven't been doing. If there are things that you generally do to take care of yourself and you just haven't been doing them just because you're so overwhelmed or so tired or just noticing that there are things that you generally do for yourself that feel good and you're just not doing them, it's good to start thinking about picking some of those things back up again. So even if it is just one of the things, like whether it's eating better, whether it's just getting some movement in, maybe it's been a few days since you've taken a shower. If you're still someone who is spending a lot of time at home, just to start doing one of those things to get them back into your schedule and to keep doing it for the next four, five, six days on a consistent basis, and then to keep building on that. And once you're beginning to automatically do those things without thinking too consciously about it, consider incorporating the next item on your list, the things that you do to take care of yourself. Number three. I'd also encourage you to go to my website at lifestuff101.com where there is a downloadable PDF which contains over 20 self-care prompts that can help to remind you of some self-care activities you can engage in right now. So the idea is, is that when we're burnt out or we're feeling anxious or if we're down or sad or depressed, sometimes we don't have... Um, the ability or like we just don't have the capacity in those moments to think, oh, this is the thing that's going to help me support myself right now. Now, any of these self-care suggestions or prompts are going to be the answer to burnout. It took you some time to get to get to a point where you're burnt out. It's going to take you some time to get to a point where you're going to start to feel better again. It does take a little bit of work to get back to a place where you're not so overwhelmed anymore. So I think it's that's a that's a really important thing to remember. But I think it's also important to remember that if you keep going with the overwhelm or if you keep going head on with all the things that you feel like you need to get done, You are, if you're not already, going to be running on fumes. And at some point, there's maybe other things that are going to start happening. And hopefully it's not things that um, will affect, for instance, your physical health. Like you don't want to end up with heart disease or even chronic uh, mental health issues um, or um, like I mentioned, like hormonal issues and things like that. So it's good to have things at your disposal, um, a self-care kit, or like I mentioned, if you wanted to go to my website and they, there are those self-care prompts, but it's also, it'll, it'll work you through, um, questions and activities so that they're there for you. If you're feeling like, you know what, I'm really, really tired, but I do need something to perhaps help pick me up and you can go and pick one of the prompts and maybe do some of that, like whether it's like reading a book or going to a um, 
finding the movie on Netflix or whatever it is that that makes you laugh or a video on YouTube that gives you a chuckle just so that it can help you just bring yourself a little bit out of that burnt out state. Again, it takes time to recover from that, but those things can be a start. So with that, today's self-care challenge has been be able to identify burnout. And if you might be dealing with it in any way, shape or form, please consider engaging in some self-care actions at the very least, but perhaps also reach out for support to trusted folks in your life. And if necessary, there are medical and mental health care providers who can also help. If any of what I talked about today resonated with you, please consider taking the steps to take care of yourself. Again, thank you so much for listening. Until next time, please stay safe and in good health wherever you are in the world. And I'll be speaking with you again for sure real soon.